Hello all, today we will discuss about western blot or protein immunoblot. Western blotting or immunoblotting is an analytical technique used to detect a target protein in a sample. By using polyclonal or monoclonal antibody specific to that protein. The mixture of proteins can be separated based on their size using polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. The protein bands are transferred to the blotting membrane. The most widely used membrane for western blotting are nitrocellulose and polyvinylin fluoride PVDF membranes. So once the gel run is completed, gel is carefully removed from the plate and soaked in western blot transfer buffer. The western blot transfer buffer recipe includes stress glycine and SDS and it has a pH of 8.4. Generally methanol is added to the transfer buffer. Let's see the membrane arrangement. Filter papers are arranged on the top and followed by gel then the western blot membrane and a few filter papers at the bottom. This is the arrangement. You can see uh, uh, there are two uh, filter papers on top then the then the acrylamide gel and below that you can see the membrane and uh, below which there are again uh, filter papers arranged uh, below the membrane. Let's see how the transfer and staining works. So after, after arranging the membrane and the gel, electric current is applied to the transfer. for the transfer of uh, protein from the gel to the membrane. Uh, again, uh, the transfer time, applied current and the voltage need to be optimized to get better results. The bloating membrane can be stained using Ponchu, which is a, which is a reversible stain uh, and the dye can be easily removed by washing the membrane with water. Staining with Ponchu is, is uh, helpful to know the effectiveness of protein transfer and uh, which does not have any deleterious effect on the protein. If the protein is not transferred to the membrane, further processing will be a waste of time. So it is good to have uh, after the transfer is completed, you can uh, stain with uh, Ponchu yes, uh, to check whether the protein has actually transferred to the membrane or not before further processing. So once the, once the protein is uh, transferred into the membrane, the other sides of the membrane need to be, need to be blocked. The membrane uh, supports uh, membrane support that's used in western bloating have a high affinity for proteins. Therefore, after the transfer of the proteins from the gel, it is important to block the membrane surfaces of the membrane to prevent uh, non-specific binding of the detection antibodies during subsequent steps. Many blocking buffers are available to block the free sites on the membrane, like BSA, non-fat dry milk powder. Etc. In PBS, generally PBS or TBS, the stress buffered saline or phosphate buffered saline uh, is uh, used, um, uh, and uh, the the blocking agent is made in these buffers, and which uh, which is having a minor percentage of T20 or Triton X100. The blocking is done uh, overnight at four degrees, or uh, or uh, yeah, uh, is done at uh, overnight at four degrees, or at thirty-seven degrees also can be done. So again, this depends on the the the, the membrane used and the uh, the time uh, the time at which uh, this blocking is performed. So depending on that, so generally overnight at four degrees performs better. The protein uh, in the blocking solution will attach to the membrane in all places where the target protein have not attached. Thus, when antibody is added, which will bind only to the target protein, so the background interference will be reduced. So that is the whole point of doing blocking, blocking the membrane. So the unwanted uh, or uh, the the region where the protein of interest is not bound should be blocked in order to in order to avoid the non-specific binding of the of the detection antibodies. So once uh, this uh, blocking is completed, we need to use the antibodies and uh, incubate with the, with the membrane. So after the blocking of the membrane overnight, excess blocking agent is removed by washing the membrane with PBS 220 for some time and then the membrane is incubated with primary antibody solution. 
So antibody solutions need to be made which will give better results. So this that should be a, so some we can do a dilution series of the of the antibody solution uh, to check the bet, better or optimized to get the better or optimized results. Generally, one to fifty, one by fifty to one by fifty thousand uh, dilution can be performed, and this need to be tested tested to get the better results. So primary antibodies are not directly detected. Tagged secondary antibodies are used for the detection. So the detection uh, steps may vary depending on the process involved. So the most of the uh, the general uh, strategy is to have a primary antibody targeting uh, targeting protein and uh, secondary antibody will be the detection antibody. So so um, the secondary antibodies are produced after the detecting antibodies that belong to a foreign species within the bloodstream of vertebrates. So example. If uh, mouse uh, monoclonal antibodies are used as primary antibody, the secondary antibody will be anti-mouse IgG obtained from the non-mouse host. During the incubation with the antibody solution, the membrane is kept in uh, kept in a gel rocker with gentle rocking. The primary uh, antibody incubation is done for done for 30 minutes to two hours. Sometimes more incubation periods are required. Uh, the membrane is washed with washing buffer for five minutes to remove excess primary antibodies. Similarly, membrane is incubated with secondary antibody with suitable dilutions. Incubation period again uh, varies from uh, 30 minutes to 2 hours. Secondary antibody will bind to the primary antibody. The secondary antibodies uh, are uh, conjugated with uh, enzyme on which uh, the reaction with substrate in the developing solution will yield color. So excess, uh, excess antibodies are washed off with the wash buffer. And there are a variety of tags or enzyme labels can be conjugated with secondary antibody. The most widely used enzymes are host radis, uh, peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase. Sometimes uh, radioisotopes, uh, fluorophores, etc. are also used. Uh, the, nowadays, generally, radioisotopes are not used because they are expensive and uh, also uh, uh, they cause health hazards due to this. Uh, radioisotopes are not widely used these days. Developing uh, developing an immunoblot of HRP conjugated uh, antibody will be explained here. So uh, the developing solution is made by uh, so dissolving the substrate. Um, uh, so for HRP, DAB is a substrate in PBS and cobalt chloride uh, and uh, hydrogen peroxide are added prior to the incubation. Uh, cobalt chloride is uh, used as a enhancer and hydrogen peroxide is added just prior to the incubation with the membrane. So even uh, pre-formulated dab solutions are also available. Uh, the wash membrane with uh, wash buffer and and uh, incubate the developing solution for 30 seconds to one minute. Uh, the dab reacts with the HRP in presence of uh, peroxidase to yield uh, an insoluble brown colored product at locations where the peroxidase conjugated antibodies are bound to the target. Uh, the reaction can be stopped by adding water. So that is how the reaction is stopped. So once uh, it forms the product, uh, the reaction can be stopped by adding water. So there are various other methods to develop a plot, depend a plot depending on the nature of the tag or the label used in the secondary antibody. So one important thing is that uh, uh, the touching with the touching the membrane with bare hands will give background while developing. Rocking the membrane for some time with blocking buffer is shown to give better results. And also appropriate dilutions need to be tested out, uh, antibody dilution need to be tested out which give good, good results. So some optimization is required um, in the antibody dilutions as well as the incubation times which will yield better results. So these are the applications uh, of western blot in medical diagnostics. So one of them is uh, HIV, western blot test is used as a confirmatory test for detecting anti-HIV antibody in human serum sample. Uh, the western blotting is also used for confirmatory test for hepatitis B infection and also for testing Lyme disease. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe.